Hi, uh, my name's Keith. Like every other creepypasta, I doubt you're gonna believe mine. Seriously? Okay, um, so a big part of a creepypasta is immersion, right? That goes with any art form. You want to get immersed, you want to get into it. Immediately saying that it's a creepypasta, acknowledging that it's a creepypasta, and acknowledging that what you're saying is a stereotype and embracing it, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's just a newfound respect I have for the story, I guess. Last Saturday, I was sitting on my couch when a strange man knocked on my door. He looked like he was no older than 21. He gave me a strange CD. I said, thanks, and closed the door. Uh, that, that wasn't natural at all. Like... That just, that just wasn't natural. An old man walking up saying, hey, you know, here's a disc. It, it's like, it's like Pokemon Black Bat, okay? Come on. Next, I decided to put the strange CD in my computer out of curiosity. Once I put the CD into the computer, the video automatically started. Literally automatically started. I wasn't saying that sarcastically, that's what it says. Literally in all caps, automatically started. As if it was spooky that some weird autoplay feature was enabled, I don't know. Usually Windows Movie Video or some confirmation message would come up, but no, it just started. <gasps> what the fuck? Are you ready kids came up and I jolted out of my seat. It was loud enough to pop your eardrum exclamation point. Something was strange. You would expect the kids to say, Aye aye, Captain, but instead it was a mixture of blood curdling screams and crying. Uh, it's just so much wrong. The, the way I see it, I think if it would actually be at risk of blowing out your eardrums, it would also be at serious risk of um, blowing out your speakers, right? So, I don't know, that's just my thought on that. And uh, another thing, it is sure jump to quick escalation. It, the stereotype tropes all over the place. You know, it's like almost like a... It's, forgot the... Sonic.exe type deal where it just... At least it was subtle in that story. I'm not defending that, don't get me wrong. But at least it was subtle and had somewhat of a build-up to it. This is just in there. And I don't like that. I like, I like the build-up. Not the cartoon cry. It sounded real. Oh god. I will never forget those screams. The normal intro started, but when Spongebob was going to whistle his nose, his eyes looked inhuman. They were red. Evil, dark red. Period. They were red. Period. Evil, dark red. Period. Just stop. Just stop it. Stop. No. It's just stop it. It's just structured wrong. Not, I'm not even gonna get into the red eye thing. Every story that's bad has to have a red eye thing. I was just expecting it at this point. He didn't even whistle his nose. He just stood there for about 20 seconds. Then it cut right to the show. It started outside SpongeBob's house. It was the same frame for 50 seconds with no sound. Then a single frame flashed over the screen. Okay, this is a good time to address problems I just have with stuff like that in general. Would it really be unsettling if the person was scared and traumatized one, there was no reaction to try to close the video? It, I would have been happy if the person would have said, I tried to close the video, but it didn't work. It would have been shitty, but uh, you know, at least we would know because there's no reason why he shouldn't with how terrified he sounds. Another thing, one single frame for 50 seconds? Is it just me, or would that just instill boredom? That would not instill fear, really. The frame, with the frame, and no music. It kind of reminded me of Squidward's suicide. I went back and I was terrified. It's addressing Squidward's suicide in the story. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! I went back and I was terrified. It was a picture of something very evil. It was indescribable. That picture is burned in my head forever. 
Okay, so, um, a big part of what made a lot of a good creepypastas creepy is either one of two things. One, the description of the thing being so on point you can't help but the picture and it sits here in your head. Or two, the unknowing factor of, uh, you're not, you don't know what it looks like or what it is and that unsettles you because it's just up to the imagination. This doesn't make me leave it up to the imagination. It was a cop-out, saying it's just undescribable. And, uh, get this. And then he says right after that, I will up, I will upload the video to YouTube as soon as I can. Mind, it will not be a screamer. Fuck off, story. Like, actually. SpongeBob started to take his normal route to the Krusty Krab. A few frames repeated themselves, but the music didn't. Then I heard some more crying, and lots of it. It was a piercing cry. It sounded like a girl. That was four fragmented sentences. Some of the stuff you can't see. But, um... Okay. But the music didn't. Period. Then I heard more crying. Period. And lots of it. Period. It was a piercing cry. Period. It sounded like a girl. Period. That's just wrong. That's just hard to read. Oh my gosh probably about 12 to 14 years old. When Spongebob turns the corner to reach the Krusty Krab, my jaw dropped. The Krusty Krab's usual clamshell sign was snapped in half, with miners' bloodstains on the clamshell. About five seconds later, we see a strange, cloaked person sitting with knees to the forehead? Whatever, just, just keep reading. Ring around the rosy, pocketful of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. The cloaked figure stands up and walks down the road towards the camera. The animation is freaking out at this point. There's a very loud, strange music playing. How many times are you gonna address the music, dude? Like... Oh, the animation was looping, but the music wasn't. There's a guy and the music was creepy. Oh, oh, there's a very loud sound, and the music was playing. Yeah, you're really trying to drive home this music. Lastly, my screen goes black and my computer shuts off. I'm shocked, sweaty, and completely terrified. That doesn't sound... You know what I mean? Would the average person be sweaty? Unless it was like 90 degrees. Seeing this video, right, even how poorly it's described, just throw all the grammar errors aside and just try to visualize the situation that a weird old man gave to you. I could see being unsettled, um, what I can't see is being sweaty and being scarred for life. I don't know, a little bit of a long shot, a little bit of overreaction. I destroyed the disc and burned it. Later that night, I slept with rosary beads. I'll never forget that day. One more thing. Never, ever accept strange discs from people. You're a fucking idiot! This needs to stop! Now!